I don't know what it was. He's walking upright like a man. Sightings in and around Vermont. Bigfoot sightings across New England have been reported. Red glowing eyes, about seven feet tall. Red eyes, big old fang claws coming out through. Three inches long, you know, just sharp as they could be. There has been another UFO sighting flying over the Royal Botanic Gardens. There are 500 UFO sightings in the world every month. The truth is out there. I got into fantasy football. I saw, I actually just saw it today because I don't, I don't go on Facebook a lot. That's fair, um, that's fair. So by fantasy football, I assume you're talking about this board game, and I had questions about it. Because yes. it's similar to a video game I played, and I can't tell which one it, is based off the other. Uh, so, okay. So there's a history to this. Okay. Um, Blood Bowl. Well, That's so yeah, the it's game. Blood Bowl. It, 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 the, game is, the game is, in particular, Blitz Bowl, which is a v- rules variation of Blood Bowl. So okay. Blood Bowl was originally made by Games Workshop. Um, well... It wasn't originally made by Games Workshop, I think. It was more or less like a bunch of nerds got together and took their Warhammer minis and were like, let's make a fucking uh, Let's make them play football. football. Yeah. Oh, okay. I think that was basically what happened. And then Games Workshop was like, well, we're going to market this now. Um, so the game you played is Blood Bowl, the rules for Blood Bowl, right? Um, yeah. I think it's 12-member teams, if my memory is correct. Uh, given the prices of the boxes, that would be the most logical uh, number um so i got blitz bowl which is a rules variant of blood bowl it's like a way faster version like 30 minutes to play a game oh okay uh, nice yeah so it's like supposed to be really fast really quick um first person to get 10 points over the opponent wins that kind of thing yeah um so i got blood bowl season two which has the humans and the dwarves uh I'm going to probably paint the humans as the Jets and the the dwarves as the Giants because I think that's oh, funny. Oh, that's funny. I like it. Uh, I was not. It turns out I'm not unique in that joke because the oh. official Blood Bowl team is the the Dwarven Giants or something like that. Oh, uh, so I, I'm not I'm not super clever, but I think it's funny. Uh, it is. And I also picked up an undead team too, just to have a third team. So like. If I play with someone, it's not always mm-hmm. the same two teams. It can like gotcha. rotate a little bit. Yeah. Uh, but basically, it's football, but way more violent. Okay. It's, it, it's football with it's hockey football is what hockey I call football. It. It's the XFL. Yeah, kinda, kinda. Um, I'm very excited for it. It looks super fun. The rules are actually fairly easy. Uh, in the version I bought comes with cards for multiple like every possible team you can have in blitz bowl so it has oh. the lizard men it has the dark elves it has the wood elves so stuff that doesn't even have like official wood uh blitz bowl boxes like yeah. i could literally go to um a, lo- a friendly local game store and buy just an, buy minis act, for them. like an actual blood bowl team yeah and then just take the minis out of that that i need for blitz bowl and then i also have a full blood bowl team <laughs> Oh, shoot. All right. Yeah. So I, I got it because, like, it's more or less a board game mm-hmm. that happens to be a war game. So Yes. Um, and because I thought that that would be the best chance of getting people to play war games is if I have all the pieces and I'm effectively just playing a board game with someone. That's kind of... Yeah. I, I've reached that point in my life where I'm like... Uh, the number of people around me who have enough time to devote to war gaming as a hobby has severely diminished oh yeah <laughs> <laughs> that, that definitely happens so uh i guess i'll just be the person who makes the shit and mm-hmm. it was a cheap way to do it because it was like yeah. 75 dollars for the full game and one team one extra team so i'm at three teams full game board all that stuff i assembled everything last night i'm kind of stoked for it not gonna lie um so once once socially distanced board gaming can happen again, I'll be stoked yeah. on it. We uh, should get uh here's what I'm picturing in my head. We'll get a table. It mm-hmm. sits in the middle of a room, and yeah. there's at least four feet around the outside perimeter of the table. And yeah. then you ever play a shuffleboard? I don't want to do that. 
the shuffleboard sticks with the game pieces. Uh, but then that's that's too much like like classic war games. Oh, that'd be fun. Wait, can we just do real war games? I mean, that won't yeah. affect things. What? Like like war games started as like historical reenactments. You know that, right? No. Like that's what D and D started as. I always thought that war games started as Warhammer. Nope. Warhammer was just like the the famous uh, version of it. It like started with like people reenacting the Battle of the Bulge type shit. Mm. Yeah. And D&D started as a war game too. It was like a specific set of rules for war gaming. What? Yeah. That's crazy. Yeah, yeah. No, it's, it's weird. Um... And, like, oh, I also found out that there was another game store in, in Poughkeepsie near us. What? Yeah, so there's Dragon's Den, Kerwin's, yeah. and Champion. Huh. And it has way more wargaming supplies, and I'm very mad at myself that I didn't find it before the pandemic. Shoot. I don't know. I want to get into wargames. After I finish redoing... Uh, Everything? Yeah, well, the kitchen... Was the kitchen, and then that turned into the living room and the upstairs and the dining room. But yeah. we were going to do one room at a time. But I want to rejigger stuff. Because yeah. if I can bring... I would like to keep my supplies upstairs. But yeah. the way it sounds like things are going with, like, modern rustic, whatever, that's jumbo shrimp. But um, if I have enough room, I might be able to bring the game table from upstairs and replace yeah. the dining room table with that. Which would also be easier in to terms do stuff. Of, of to just do stuff. It just makes life yeah. easier if you're not separated by a flight of stairs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I get it. The yeah. um. So I want to bring that down to the dining room and then get into just war games. Well, you also have a table that's literally perfect for war games. Yeah, explicitly. Like, <laughs> like it, I just it's like I just bought it and then the world died. Um, yeah, it's like yeah. literally designed for war games practically. Yeah. I mean, it's D and it's more D and D and board games in general, but like, it's perfect for war gaming. Because like, not only it that, is. like, if you're in the middle of a match and you have to stop for whatever reason, you can just pop those slate those slats on top, and everything's and then still there. It's just a normal table, and then when it's time to play again, you take the slates off the top, and everything's exactly how it was. Yeah, yeah. it's pretty great. Yeah, like, not gonna lie, I'm super jealous of it. <laughs> There's, it's great. I, it, I just need to use it. Uh, yeah, well, that's the story of our life, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, I oh oh so fun story talking about game stores. Yes. Uh, so I was out and about riding my bike, my new bike, which yes, beautiful silver Cannondale. Yeah, I love it. Um, we talked about it before the podcast. I don't think we talked. About, I didn't have it last podcast because I just got it a you week didn't. ago. Um, so I got this new bike. I love it. I'm riding it a ton. Uh, I went on a thing called the rail trail that's near us, which if you're from New York, you know that there's like this literal hiking trail that goes from New York city all the way to like Ottawa or something yeah. crazy. There's news articles where there, there, they were a bunch of separate rail trails, which are just trails that are where railroads used to be. And yeah. now the, they're trying to connect all of them. They have, they are connected. You they're can all, literally. I think there's. They're trying to. Well, I might be seeing it wrong. No, no. They're, you they're, can literally go from New York City to Canada right now by bicycle. Yeah. Yes, or walking if you are that no, insane. They, they just keep renovating them and making them nicer. Oh, they're phenomenal. They're gorgeous. Absolutely gorgeous. Like way better looking than I ever remember them being. <laughs> um, <laughs> but anyways, so I I uh, ended up in the heart of Poughkeepsie uh, two days ago. Mm -hmm. uh, so I went. Because I was there, I was like five minutes away by bike from uh, the new location of a game store from our area, Dragon's yeah. Den. Um, I was hoping you wouldn't moved. say that. They moved. Yeah. And for whatever reason, my brain was like, I might as well check it out because I'm here. Yeah. Um, bad mistake. Dragon's Den is a, is a, a hive of scum and villainy. It like, is. Famously. It really, really <laughs> is. Uh, so I went there and I'm talking to the people and like I'm trying to figure out like what games they play, right? I yeah. mean, obviously, pandemic and all that shit, I'm probably not going to be going because of, you know, I, I, I'm fine walking into a store and looking mm -hmm. at product and stuff like that, but a war game 
if I don't know the social behavior of the person who I'm talking to, yeah, uh, that's, that's tricky a in lot. game stores. Like, like, cause, cause, um, well, I want to play war games with other people, but I'm talking about it from the perspective of like, uh, safety, pandemic safety. Yeah, where it's like I don't know if you're being a safe person when it comes to the pandemic. Like, yeah. I don't know if you're wearing your mask all the times you should be wearing your mask effectively. Yeah. Um, and even though the mask reduces the risk of that hap- like transmission and all that stuff, uh, a two-hour play session over a war game is not really the thing I want in my yeah. life. Because that just adds way too many like risk factors, and it's not mm-hmm. worth it. Um, so I was just kind of like doing fact-finding and honestly trying to figure out what war game I want to buy to start painting yeah um because i want to do some painting in this like free time this sudden preponderance of free time i have um uh, and uh so i'm talking to this dude he's like yeah we got a starter dnd session on mondays yada 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 i'm like oh you know i ran i ran d i was a dm i've, I've run dnd sessions kind of like because i was i was uh coming off of what he was saying you know effectively yeah. saying like oh no um, I'm a f- I'm familiar with D and D, so like that's not really a great sell to me. Mm-hmm. But not saying it that way, but like trying to redirect it. And then I'm like, but you know, I might not look it, but I have a master's in game design development because like I was going to dovetail into like yeah. that's what I was using for being a DM and like trying to design things. I, I will say the um, number of cargo shorts you own, you you look like you have that degree. I don't own any cargo shorts anymore you you I look owned, like you own a lot of cargo shorts though. i owned a lot of cargo shorts but they all fell to pieces on me and now i have a pair of non-cargo shorts that i wear when i ride my bicycle um oh so, and that's why you've got that bag on the back because you don't have pockets anymore yeah i don't have real pockets i also have a i also have like my the bag that i used for my Mega Man cosplay on my back oh. as well. Um, okay. So, dude, without missing a beat, he's like, yeah, you and everyone else, in reference to me having a game design major uh, degree. And I'm like, I didn't okay. know what you were talking about when you posted that. And I was like, it was like someone said something, but I don't know the context under which they said it. Because I literally just said I have a master's in game design development. There are yeah. not, I know for a fact there are not that many master's programs in game design yeah. development because yeah. I looked. Um, and I'm like, well, I mean, I've, I mean, he's like, yeah, you know, cause of like Phoenix university and all that stuff. And I'm like, okay, wait a second. So if I had gotten my master, my, my, my degree from Phoenix university, you not only pissed me off by ridiculing the thing I have a degree in, but you may have ridiculed the school I went to, which is like, (laughs) you don't know who you're talking to whatsoever. So my response to him is like, no, I mean, I got mine at RIT and I'm currently getting my PhD in location-based games. And he like instantly pivots to talking about Pokemon Go. And I'm just like, yeah, you knew you fucked up. (laughs) (laughs) Um, So I'm never going back to Dragon's Den again. I gave it another shot uh, and I never want to go back again. That's, Once I mean, again. that's fine. That's, I mean, Every you're aware, time... the listeners might not know the reason why we talk negatively about Dragon's Den, outside of their history, which I'll, I'll mention, is that it always smells like a high school um, uh, locker room. Yep. Outside of the high school locker roomness, the owners may have gotten in trouble for tax evasion and retained people's credit card numbers. Yeah, there's also a second, well, now it's a second owner. Um, oh, is it different owners now? Yeah, so, okay. uh, the, the, but... Uh, for reference, so here's a really fun story about Dragon's Den. Um, the owners, like, had this bad habit of hiring a bunch of, like, uh, women. Yeah. And I don't say that, like, it's bad to hire a bunch of women. I say that it was very clear that they were hiring a bunch of, like, women to attract sweaty nerds. Yeah. <laughs> like, there's, like, let me be completely true, honest with you. It was to attract sweaty nerds who could simp on the women. Yeah. That is 100% what was happening. And I know what simp means now because <laughs> because of a conversation. Um, anywho, I think that's enough talking about board games this week. 
Okay. Because guess what, Brandon? And I don't What's think that? we mentioned this in the last episode. It's the spoopy season. It is the spoopy season. I realized that uh, because of the way this month is is structured, we only get two episodes this month. In the last episode, we talked about... What was it we talked about again? Um, Sam, the weird alien clown that uh, brings yeah. children into his cabin in the woods. So we we did we did something uh, spooky in the sense of it being completely horrifying. Oh um, yeah, like on a uh, cosmic level. Uh, but we didn't do something spooky in the sense of like ghosts and Halloween and all that good s- sort of stuff. Um, okay. So, uh, but before that, uh, this is Cryptopedia. Something something something. It's on the website. You know I don't do that. Uh, if you're listening, if you're a repeat listener, um, I'm John, I'm Brandon. And this week we're covering something spoopy. And actually it's something I've wanted to cover since the first episode of the podcast. Is it also, oh, how's the song go? Mister Uki, something Uki. It might be Uki and it might be spooky. Um, that's I'm the Googling Adam the Adam. Theme song. All right. Is yeah. it creepy and kooky? Is it mysterious uh, and spooky? I don't is know it if it's altogether ooky. It's altogether ooky for sure. Altogether ooky. All right, I'm down it's with the ooky. Altogether ooky for sure. Um, I wouldn't call it kooky because there are some deaths in this story. Are and they real deaths? Huh? Are they real deaths? Actually, yes. Oh. There is. There are several real deaths in the story. Um, I literally have no idea how to like do the guessing game for this episode because it's not a single entity the Uh, entity itself is a road the the only the only thing i can give you is it's in northern jersey oh okay um i have i think i've talked about it on the podcast before for sure i'm trying Um, to remember the name of a specific road the only thing that the only road that's jumping ahead to my uh, head is Bray Road, but it's only because of the Beast of Bray Road and not the road itself. That's another um, episode that is going to happen at some point, but I have to read a book about it. Read a there's, book I'm in the middle it. of a book right now, not about the Beast of Bray Road. It's another spooky topic, because I also yeah. went, oh shit, it's October, I should do a spooky spooky. Um, so what's a road that goes through Jersey? I'm not going to Google it, because I know I'm going to just Google Haunted Roads in Jersey and that's cheap. Yeah, if, if, you, if you Google Haunted Road in Jersey, I think if you Google haunted Jersey, I think it's like literally the the first or third hit. It is I'm just going to third hit. Say Dead Man's Pass because that's the, I, the. So there is a Dead Man's Curve on the road. Is there? It oh, or not. okay. Um. So the road in question is Clinton Road. Ah, uh, we actually spoke about this. I think I've got something in a folder we, where we were listing ideas. Yeah, this was something we talked about way early. Um, yeah. I wanted to do a visit in person type thing. Um, but the more I read about it, the more I realized that, like, to do an episode, like a like a in-person episode, there's, like, nothing that would be very interesting to look at. <laughs> it's a There'd be boring... nothing to, interesting to look at, and, like, our conversation would pivot from the story of the road to just us talking about our experience of having traversed the road. <laughs> Pretty much, pretty much. It um, it's a yeah. So, in commemoration of the spooky month, as I said before, uh, this week I'm going to do things a little different, and we're going to talk about a road because that's it's not a cryptid, but it's an urban legend. So yeah. there we go. Um, located a mere hour and a half drive from the bunker we only occasionally mentioned in passing, uh, the Clinton Road is a ten mile stretch of supposedly paranormal goodness. The road is located in the reaches of Passaic County, and until recently, wasn't even completely paved. <laughs> oh, wow. And did you know, here's a fun fact, it's named after uh, George Clinton. Is it? I actually... The famous musician? Oh, not... It's not. I, the guy... I'm not... Yeah, yeah the guy... <laughs> it's not named after George Clinton. It's probably named after, like, 
the same Clinton that Clinton Avenue in in Kingston's named after. Yeah, uh, it's definitely not named after that guy. Oh no! It, it might just be because Clinton is a common name, to be totally honest. Yeah. Um. So, uh, I have been near this road, um, because it's in my absolute least my my now least favorite part of Jersey. Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, wasn't previously, but it is now. Uh, and in addition to the litany of spooky stories surrounding it, it's known for having a nearly five minute light to get on the, the connected Route 23. Oh, that sucks. It is, the, it is the longest light in the United States from what I read. Wow. Um, Why is that? Like, that's by oh, design I, for some reason. Yes, it is explicitly by design. The reason they did that was so through traffic on 23 doesn't get affected because Clinton Road is a rural lo- road. Like, it, oh, that crosses yeah. over like a major highway. So that's it, the it, reason behind it, the light. Yeah, it terminates on a major highway and it goes through West Milford. And it's like it it basically ends within spitting distance of New York State. OK, um, there's I was so, at a traffic light the other day. Here's traffic talk because everybody likes it when people complain about uh, 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 traffic. Yes, they do. Uh, can people just stop reading magazines while they drive? Wait, what? <laughs> I on 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 Friday. Okay. I got I I saw two different cars where the driver was just ha- flipping through a magazine as they were driving. What? But it wasn't a map because I know how maps look. And then that- Well, first of all, if if so- if I see someone flipping through a map today, I'll think they're a sociopath or a serial killer. Because, yeah. Cuz here's the reason. If you're looking through a map, that's because you don't want to be tracked on GPS. Yeah. So you are a murderer. Ah, uh, yeah. That, like, the maps are so antiquated, suspicious. The other thing, uh, I had a thought earlier today, because I had to stop by the gas station to get this bottle of sugar piss, uh, which is it delicious, is by piss. the way. It's, it is... it's, it's it's peach flavored iced tea, but it's got 80% of your daily sugar, and it's sugar fucking piss delicious. Is delicious. Sugar piss um, is delicious. People paying with actual money has turned into, like, how I used to feel when I saw people bust out a checkbook. <laughs> I mean, I use it to pay for the for my Chinese food when I go to the Chinese, like, the Chinese food restaurant because they don't take, cha- they don't take like, credit cards because they probably are laundering the money. Oh, if they don't take cards, that's one thing. But if you're at a gas station, yeah. I pay cash if I get stuff delivered because, or if I tip because then it can be off the books or whatever. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. But if you're at a cash register and there's a line and then I, st- like... S- just, uh, just seeing somebody, like, re- digging through a pocket, you see, like, a wad of money, and then they're just, like, slowly picking through a fistful of coins. And they... Uh, I don't know. Uh, just, uh, don't do that. Uh jeez. That's that's awful. <sighs> yeah, I, I And don't then know. there's the I've... back and forth conversation. It's like, there's the dollars, or it's one thing, but the flat number, whatever. But if there's yeah. change, then they, like, they count out the change, and then there's a back and forth where they're like, oh, did it give you enough? And then the cash register, like, just I, do the thing, do the thing, use your phone or use your a card and go boop. And then just boop. And then transaction done. It go boop. I never touch coins. Coins, coins to me, we should just get rid of coins. I, we should just round to the nearest dollar, whether it's up and down. It'll average out to be about the same. I mean, they, they round to like the nearest, um, what is it? Like nickel or something like that in Canada because pennies are gone. There's, I support that. I support remove all coins. Like, I don't care. Like, I'll, like, save a quarter because it'll round down one time, and then I'll pay an extra quarter because it'll round up another time. I don't care. It'll all come out in the wash. Well, you see, here's the thing. Uh, then you're going to get all the, the silver standard uh, money is whatever people all up in your shit with that kind of talk. What? Because, cause, like, they, they, they need paper money because they, they believe for some reason paper money is more real than digital money, despite the fact that it's money all fake Money is a concept anyways. at this point in time. Money's garbage. Yeah. Money is useless. If society decided that money meant nothing, it would be over. Yeah. You know Which, what? Yeah. You know what? Here's the thing. Um, If we all just collectively agreed that the U.S. dollar was worthless and we switched to something else... We would destroy the billionaire class. Oh, yeah. Instantaneously. Yeah. Well, also, if we were all just like, mm, I want to cash out and just like went to a bank and cashed out, just there just wouldn't be the money. Yeah. 
I, I kind of, I honestly, I'm in support of the, well, th there's the thing though. Cause like, if we literally all just said, fuck you to the billionaire class, it would, it would cease to exist because there's so many more of us. Yeah. But the thing is, uh, they use wedge issues to drive. All right. <laughs> <laughs> and here's the problem with capitalism. <laughs> oh God. My, my, um, my leftist leanings are starting to come through. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Listen, I'm just mad. All right. That's just all there is to it. I'm mad at the world. Anywho, my personal history with this road is an old one. Back in the halcyon days of physical books, going back to talking about physical things, I first learned of this stretch of word in a weird U.S. book. Um, more recently, my ex told tales of her sister's fear of the road during their high school years. When we were first starting the podcast, I also wanted to do an in-person trip to the road, as I mentioned before. However, I was far too lazy to record that episode. Um, Clinton Road is a pastiche of the stereotypical road horror stories that have permeated Americana. A dead man's curve, demonic animals, ghost bridges and cars, and even allegations of cult activity. Wait, what's a ghost bridge? We'll get into that. Um, like, so, is it like a phantasmal No, no. Bridge it's it's that bridges you... that are haunted. So like Bunny Man Bridge in Oh, Fairfax. Okay. It, it, that's the same kind of concept. It's like, like I, I was thinking of like a bridge that only exists for a short period of like it, like its temporal existence is very short. So like a bridge that only happens on a full moon and you can drive across it and the moon goes away. There's no more bridge, so you have to like take the long way. That'd be really cool. I don't think I've ever heard of that in terms of storytelling, but that would be a really cool story. Yeah, like really cool. Um, but anywho. So I'm going to be pulling from the original Weird New Jersey article, Clinton Road, A Dark Ride, for stories about this particular haunted road. Um, I want to preface this by saying that, with one exception, none of these are verifiable in any way, shape, or form. They are all anecdotes. And this is, like, the article itself is literally just reposting people's stories, and 90% of them are anonymous. So uh, this good is all reliable big, anonymous. There is a big old asterisk on this episode to take everything I say with a, with a grain of salt in terms of stuff. What's um, the plural of asterisk? Asteri. Asterises. Asterisize. Aster. What's the? I spelled that wrong. Probably asterisk. Of asterisk. Um. Uh. None. Uh, plural it, is asterisks. Yeah. Apparently, asterisk is also a plural form of it, but it's not standard. <laughs> I love when I typed in, what's the plural of asterisk? Then there is, there's the recommended um, thing. The what? second, like, did you mean is, how do you spell asterisk? Like, the way everybody says it, but it's not actually spelled that way. Oh, God. Um, also, I decided I'm going to start pronouncing a hard D in Wednesday. You're a monster. Yeah. It's there. It is there, but you're still a monster. It's there. When is there ever a silent D? In Wednesday. Name one other word where the D is silent. Um, Wednesday hyphen afternoon. No. <laughs> what are words with silent D apostrophe S's? See they, what? So uh, there I, are there are aren't there? there well, are. well, no, no. There one there aren't because the words with the silent letter D is badge. I I see. I, there's the D in badge, edge, handsome. No, no, there's no there's the, badge. Badge. I I have the D in handsome. Well, no, I guess the D is silent. And handsome. Handsome. Here's a word that I did not think it was spelled this way. So what's that thing? It's a cloth, and you would blow your nose back in the nasty days in this cloth, and then just wash Handkerchief. it. Handkerchief. Do you know it's a handkerchief? Yes. It's, it's a spelled handkerchief. I know, but it's a handkerchief. I always thought it was H A N K. Really? Yeah, it's hand it's a hand handkerchief. Yeah, because it's a kerchief. I mean, get the fuck out of here, Google. They added Wednesday in there. Yeah, a kerchief is like a very specific thing, and it's a handkerchief. Because huh. like a kerchief is like like um 
uh, like a bandana, yeah. that's more. That's actually more of a kerchief. Why isn't that called a head kerchief? <laughs> I'm going to start calling them head kerchiefs <laughs> right now. You're a monster. Oh, you're yeah. going to make everyone mad at you. Is what you're going to do? Oh yeah, you are. You are going out of your way to piss people off right now. I know. Like I know people that wear them for masks, and I'm like, oh, cool headkerchief. <laughs> you must like paisley. <laughs> They're actually, um, so I read that gators are actually, like, worse than not ma- wearing a mask because it just captures, if there's virus particles, it just captures them all. Yeah, I, I think it just doesn't do a lot. I, it doesn't I, do anything. I think they're not really effective. They're not effective um, at all. Yeah. Um, but anywho, so one of the most perennial stories from the road is the existence of a ghost boy along a particular stretch of road. <gasps> Wait, is this where Casper's from? That would be great, but no. Oh, because, well... Also, Cas- a, a okay. popular movie explicitly about dead children. Mm-hmm. <laughs> nice yeah, job pulling so that shit off. I, I want to talk about Casper a little bit. Um, Casper's, like, actually horrifying when you think about it. Right? Because, okay... Wasn't he so, was a child that was destroyed by a car? Was he destroyed by a car? I think it was a car accident. I think he was hit by a car. I could be wrong. Well, first of all, he's he's got um, what is it? Hypercephalacy, which is a uh, very large head, right? Yeah. So he's got the kind of whole like I don't know if it's I actually don't know if this is a epithet or a slur. So if it is, I apologize. Uh, but melon heads. That's <laughs> one. I know what you're talking about. Everybody, know, everybody knows what you're talking about. This is the whole like melon heads of Ohio or whatever. Yeah, yeah. It's the like story a... that people know. So it became colloquial. I'm sure that's not a preferred uh, descriptor because it's, um, it's referring to hy- it's referring to hydrocephalism. Hypercephalism. Yeah. Hypercephal- yeah. yeah. So, um, but so, but regardless, so there's a chance that this child, um, had a really rough death. Is what that's saying to me. Yeah. Uh, first of all. Second of all, his uncles apparently all died at the same time, too. Suicide pact. <laughs> Maybe. So there's just a family of dead individuals who um, presume, like, because Casper's young. Oh, presumably so here's, here's, they were young, too. All of his uncles died from pneumonia. Really? Yeah. Is that is that true? Yeah. Stretch, stinky, and fatso. Uh, and then it also just says Casper's afterlife is not exactly pleasant. Oh, apparently Casper died from pneumonia um, in the movie. Okay. Uh, uh, is it? Oh, yeah, I'm seeing the, the not exactly pleasant thing. Uh, who was Casper the ghost before he oh, died? Oh, he also died of pneumonia. Yeah. yeah. Wow. Pneumonia is a is the real killer, um, but regardless, Casper's a nightmare. Like, let's just be real about that. Like, honestly, any ghost story is a little bit of a nightmare because to make a ghost, you need someone dead. Yeah, right. It every ghost every ghost story, no matter how um, no matter how like kind or whatever the ghost is, is at its core. A horror story. It's the epilogue to a horror story. It is. Um, so, anywho, uh, the legend goes, if you visit a bridge just past the dead man's curve and throw a penny over edge, the edge, it'll be thrown back at you. Supposedly, a boy haunts this stretch of the road and is the entity returning your pennies back to you. In the various tellings of the legend, the boy has died at this point of the road. Mm-hmm. Some claim it to be a death by drowning in a nearby lake. Others uh, claim him to have been killed in a dare go- gone wrong, with the boy being left behind by his friends and told to stand on the bridge while they drive to the nearby Route 23. Now, and back. If that one's true, this kid has got to be the dumbest child in existence he 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 does have to be i I, i've started cutting i'm I'm, I'm just on a casper dive Um, that's fair they never address what year casper died so we're left to assume that casper died somewhere around the time when the actual cartoon um was published because or 
he died in the future and is a time traveling ghost. I like that idea better because um, otherwise, a ch- and uh, uh, essentially a family died of pneumonia in 1960. That seems about right to me. I so. feel like that's that's not far enough in the past for like people to die from pneumonia that are like at the age when it should be no issue. <laughs> well, I mean, his family, yeah, because like it would make more sense if it was tuberculosis. I'll be totally honest. Yeah. Although yeah, I think yeah, TB more... had a did TB was TB it was treatable at that point. When did the TB well, vaccine but come if, out? If you had TB before the vaccine, 1921. So even then, they they in theory should have been mostly vaccinated. So yeah. Are they? Wait, hmm. was Casper's family anti-vaxxers? <laughs> oh my god. Is that is this the new fiction? Because they died of things they shouldn't have because it was treatable at that period of time. If Cash of the Friendly Ghost family was a family of anti vaxxers That's the best a, that's explanation. It's been a thing since vaccines are a thing. Yeah. Like uh it's entirely possible that <laughs> Casper the Ghost becomes a cautionary tale about the dangers of anti-vaccination. Yeah, I think. Oh wow! I think I think that I think that that is my new headcanon for Casper the Friendly Ghost. The, um, it's it, Casper the Friendly Ghost. Go get fucking vaccinated. Yeah, it, it's it, it's um, if you watch a movie and then try to reel back your suspension of disbelief and try to find real, more real explanations for what's happening instead of just accepting what they tell you, then then if you, you reel it back a little bit, still, you know, ghosts are real, suspend, suspend your disbelief to that extent, but mm-hmm. to the reality of which they died, they didn't get vaccinated. They died. <laughs> <laughs> so science does exist in this world. Yeah. We're, 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 we're operating under it a... Does, uh... Well, also, I mean, there's science... a pneumonia vaccine, so like, go get that if you're, you're you're in that risk group. Is there actually? I didn't know that. Yeah. I thought yeah. I thought pneumonia was a uh, bacteria. Uh, it, it's mostly for older people or people who are high risk. So like, um, Erica, because of what it, you know, yeah, the, yeah. The, the earlier in the year or whatever, like she she got her, her pneumonia vaccine. Huh. Yeah. I didn't know that that was a thing. Mm-hmm. Or a sh- it's a shot. Yeah, well, I mean, that's yeah. most vaccines. I mean, you can get vaccines in oral route, but shots are generally the best. <laughs> oh, boy. It's a pill. Oral route's a pill. Oh. Yeah. Um, But anywho, this particular <laughs> child um, was dumb. Maybe yeah. not as dumb as Casper the Friendly Ghost's family, but still dumb. <laughs> <laughs> um, there's even yet another version of the tale... In which the child was hit while attempting to retrieve a quarter from the bridge. <laughs> so I honestly, honestly, I don't think uh, this. Whatever happened to this kid? He was not firing on all cylinders. No, is my assumption. He wasn't um, the sharpest bulb in the shed. <laughs> what does that even mean? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, it also turns out the phenomenology of this particular haunting is just as varied, um, with the penny being returned as the most ubiquitous. Um, but in one version, witnesses claimed that by throwing a quarter off the bridge, there will be a delay, after which point the water ripples again and the child's face appears in the reflection. That's kind of awesome. That would be a dope one. Um, yeah. There are also less fantastical variations on the return coin, um, where it's returned to the road by the morning. So, like, you throw it off the edge, and then the next morning, the coin's there, which, um, unless you mark the coin, there's, like, literally no way to prove (laughs) that it's the same coin. Uh, The most outrageous of these, with the exception of the child's face one, uh, might be that if you get out of the car on the bridge, you'll see a quarter drop. And if you bend down to pick up the quarter, you get pushed into the lake. <laughs> I like that. That's a prank ghost right there. That's a well. The idea is it's that's the one that goes hand in hand with a variation where the child 
um, is trying to get the quarter off the bridge. Um, so it's like the kid trying to save you from being murdered by a car uh, by dropping a quarter okay. for some reason. I, I don't know. Um, the phenomena of this legend, fairly easily dismissed. Because um, most of these stories are pure hearsay. I did, however, find a few videos uh, trying to capture the phenomenon on YouTube, uh, and I was not impressed. So, Brandon, I'm going to just yeah. take one. Of, so this is going to be in the show notes. Um, okay. For those of you wondering, the title in the show notes is going to be, in all caps, uh, asterisk, not clip fake, asterisk, Clinton Road boy throws coin back, and there are... Uh, oh, one, gotcha. Two, three, so let me, four, uh, I'll click on the thing. Oh, it's a nice short video. Yeah, it's 28 seconds. So the the video starts with them doing a ding dong ditch. Yeah, because I was they're say- from Jersey. Ugh. So. Huh? Yeah, not impressive. No, it's not impressive at all. And you know, want to know why it's not impressive? Outside of the fact that it's terrible. Like, it's very yeah. clearly it's very clearly fake, first of all. Um, but second of all, hey, Brandon, take a look at that. Uh, look at the, the, the railing on that bridge. Oh, wait. Let, 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 I got to click on that. All right. Not clickbait. Yeah. It's a concrete. It's cast concrete. Yeah. But look at look at the design of it and then go back to uh, the show notes and uh, the, the the copy and look at the picture scroll, I have scroll, of the bridge. Scroll, 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 scroll. I'm scrolling. I'm scrolling. Oh, that's just not the bridge. Yeah, it's not the bridge. And you know what else? It's not any of the bridges on Clinton Road whatsoever. <laughs> <laughs> Please, do, did you really? I can picture you like going on Google Maps and on every... Yeah. <laughs> every time the bridge crossed a river or a stream, every time the road crossed a stream, I dropped a pin on it and looked. None of the none of the bridges on Clinton Road matched that, that picture. And in fact, um, every single youtube video that purported to have like an example of the phenomena on mm-hmm. youtube uh none of them uh had the, the same bridge they were all different bridges uh. um i'm pretty sure the bridge i have a picture of in the episode copy is the canonical bridge yeah so um, so to 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 the kids from the video that i just watched if you're gonna fake something badly like and make it less easily verifiable that it's not the th- like like it was it was stupid easy to, to, to de- disprove it like already it was clear that one of the because there's like 10 people there it's clear that one of the people just threw a coin on the ground yeah behind them um <sighs> i hate teenagers yeah so uh but yeah, no, like I said, I watched several videos of Clinton Road and uh, this particular phenomena on Clinton Road, none of them, literally none of them are the same location on the on the road. And as far as I could tell, only one of them was even on Clinton Road at all. <laughs> <laughs> oh. um, so I also did a little bit more research. Um, because the death of a child on a bridge, uh, teenager or otherwise, because the age of this kid, I literally don't know how old they are because yeah. every single, like the, the, the possible stories all could be different age child children. And for reference, um, no offense to our younger listeners, but if you're sub like 23, I consider you a child. Yeah. Just, just as a rule, like. 23 24 that's like the the border line for me um just just because it, yeah, it's the w- common references in in conversation right if i it, it, it's whatever if you're too if you're younger than me and we don't have enough um common points in our in our background to have like a normal conversation then you're then you're a kid you're too young you're a kid and alternatively if it, the same thing happens but you're older than me then you're, you're just too old. You're just an old person. Mm-hmm. You, either way, you don't exist to me. Yeah. Um, <laughs> that sounds really fucking terrible. It does. Like, listen, if you don't know who Al Kabong is, don't talk to me. But that the thing is, if 
then you'd get a lot of older people for that though i know and i have a lot of conversations with older co-workers about like el kabong and hong kong foo you know Adam are you Ant just and... are you just an old man in a in a, a 30 year old <sighs> a 29 year old's body because i think i may might... very well be fuck <laughs> except I, except i know how computers work <laughs> True, true. Like, I'll have, uh, like, and, and here's something that happened um, last week. I had conversation with somebody about, um, it actually was uh, El, El Cabong. And um, later I showed that person how to zoom in in Adobe PDF because I noticed they were holding magnifying glass up to their screen. <laughs> hey! Oh. There's so much wrong with that, what you just said to me. Yeah. I don't even know how to even begin to process it. Mm -hmm. um, but at the same time, I helped somebody make a TikTok. So, like, I just don't know. What is it? I, I, I don't have a TikTok. So. I don't have a TikTok either. Because I was told to make one so I could like other people's stuff. But I was like, n n no. That sounds awful. I don't want, yeah. a, I don't want a TikTok. Uh-uh. There's too many Zoomers on there. And I just, I, I'm avoiding Zoomers as a rule. What's a Zoomer? It's the generation below us, I guess. Gen Z? No, that's not Gen Z. We're millennials, I think. Yeah, no, we're millennials. Uh, we're, but we're like that weird, like, I don't know what we are anymore. Well, like, my sister's I, a millennial. It's basically, if you were in school during 9-11, you you're more or less a millennial. If you're in grade school, that is, call it, not college. Okay. Yeah, I mean, I, I like, but I have a lot of, like, cultural touch points that are Gen Xer, like... I fucking love real big fish. Yeah. So I'm a weirdo, I guess. You and are like, a weirdo. The Gen X, the Gen X aesthetic is kind of the aesthetic I'm most attracted to. So I don't know. Whatever. Um, <laughs> I don't even know what I was trying to say. Uh, so anywho, uh, I don't, I couldn't find the death of a young boy on that bridge. I found the death of a child. I found the death of a young woman. I found the death of a truck driver. I found several deaths. I found the death that we're going to talk about later on in this episode. I just love the idea of you Googling in the dark and it's just like boy death. <laughs> like you're just looking like boy death, New Jersey, boy death bridge. Well, I was, I was searching explicitly on that stretch of road, West Milford, New Jersey, and I couldn't find anything. Now, that being said, that what a shame. Mean, that doesn't mean that it didn't happen. It just means that my research didn't reveal Find it. anything, yeah. Um, there might have been someone who died there, but whatever. Um, also, none of the deaths that happened on the road are associated with any of the ghosts that are on this road. Whatsoever. Like, none of them. There's, yeah. no, there's no, like, verifiable death that has a... Uh, associated ghost story with it but mm -hmm. whatever so close to the ghost boy bridge sits the remains of a reportedly cursed druidic temple okay uh, in weird new jersey which for reference is as i said before a newsletter that give gathers re reader stories and like acts as kind of like an aggregate type thing where it just like um humans from new york style where it's like a bunch of uh um independent stories so for like for people who who are listening to this podcast who somehow have avoided reading weird new jersey you might be a zoomer um <laughs> uh that's that's what it is basically so uh, readers of weird new jersey reported that druidic rituals were carried out at this site with those who came too close to the rituals having ill fates befall them now, the temple itself is a canonical structure, a conical structure, not canonical, uh, resembling a fireplace or a furnace. Now, in actuality, it is in fact an iron smelter. <laughs> <laughs> it was built in 1826. I was like, yeah, was I, added... I, 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 I pictured temples as being more temple-y. Yeah. Uh, it was built in 1826 and... It's on the National Register of Historic Places, and I looked at it. It was added in 1976. You can actually find it on the official document. There is not much else to the story. However, there's a bit of irony. Oh, get out of here. In the get out of here. 
Iron Smelter has been co-opted into Legends of Druidic lore. Given that exposure to iron has a 24-hour penalty on druids casting their supernatural or spell-like abilities. <laughs> <laughs> I miss d and <laughs> I do, too. Um, so, the Clinton Furnace is not the only happening place to carry out rituals in the woods of Clinton Road. At one point in the history of the road, there existed a castle in the North Jersey woods. Constructed, well, construction started in 1907 by Richard James Cross. Cross Castle truly lived up to its name, even if Cross called it Barefoot House for some reason. I don't really understand rich people in the naming of their houses. I don't know. And I was listening to a podcast. I forget which one. Yeah. Um, I think it's the one with the multiple brothers on it. Um, but somebody just mentioned, like, there's nothing just stopping you from naming your house. No, there's not. Like, I just want to name my house. Well, I mean, there were names for for apartments in our The Blood group. Pit? The Blood Pit. <laughs> I recall the Blood Pit. The Blood Pit. Um, so, I mean, it's not that weird. People who are not rich do it, too. Yeah. <laughs> but usually it's not, like, an elegant name. It's usually, like, a place of scum and villainy or something along those lines. Yeah. Um, the estate itself was 365 acres. One acre a, a year? St- huh? Or one one acre a day? Yeah, something like that. It had a 77-acre body of water known as Hank's Pond. And it had a boathouse, tennis courts, guest cottages, ice houses, and every other possible outhouse that rich people have in the uh, early 1900s. Mm-hmm. It took eight years to complete the structure, and a whopping two years later, Richard Cross died. <laughs> I mean, at least he got to enjoy it for a little bit. Yeah, it, he just didn't get much with it. Um, the home was then sold by the family in 1919, so uh, two years after the death, mm-hmm. uh, to the city of New York, Newark for $155,000 uh, to join the city's watershed. The lavish home was basically instantly stripped for parts. And sat a shell of itself until 1988, at which point it was demolished as a liability, much to the chagrin of the people of West Milford. Yeah, so here's your fun fact. The um, yeah. Richard Cross is actually the uh, great-grandfather of David Cross, the actor. Really? No. That would be pretty cool. But I, I, I even pretended to Google for a little bit. You did. That's why I kind of believed you. I shouldn't have. <laughs> Never trust me. I I have given up on trusting people, and every time that I try to trust someone, it <laughs> blows back in my face. Every <laughs> single time. <laughs> like that one time I got robbed. <laughs> <laughs> did we ever talk about that? <laughs> I don't think we ever talked about it on the podcast. You just got fucking robbed. <laughs> <laughs> I tried to help someone, basically who was hitchhiking for all intents and purposes, because they needed to get their car. And as I'm driving them to their car, I realize that they're not directing me to their car, but to a gas station to get money. And then I realize that they're effectively robbing me, but like the least violent robbing that has ever happened to anyone. Um, Actually, no, it's there's a degree of violence in inherent to robbing someone at least metaphysical violence yeah um (laughs) but yeah so i got robbed for like a hundred (laughs) bucks because i tried to trust someone yeah just never trust people it's a fact it's true and also never give people rides home from a bar unless you actually know them that's because that that's a that, fact i've had similar situations happen to me when someone just needed a ride and then there's like hey can you just stop here or all my buddies has it and it just no just no well i didn't we didn't get robbed the time that we had to drive jay back to his house but we got robbed of our time because he wouldn't stop talking to us we did get robbed of our time but we also kind of like knew jay as a person <laughs> we did we did but we still were robbed of our time i'm going yes. to say uh so because it's a castle in the woods, um, that like it, because it's like a structure that has been broken down, it instantly became a popular hangout spot by law. 
Yeah, I mean, like, that's... I, I mean, I was cool once. That sounds like a place I would go, you know. I mean, all the I cool places... Cool. There was... Everybody's just trespassed a little bit because there was a good hang somewhere. It's true. Um, so, yeah, it became, it became a hangout spot because uh, teenagers are teenagers. Mm-hmm. And uh, it naturally became the source of a local legend. Claims of sudden visions upon entering the castle boundaries, ghostly strangulation, and tales of Satanism abound. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> my head autocompletes sometimes. So yeah. my head replaced... When you said the word strangulation, my head autocompleted autoerotic asphyxiation. And this picture <laughs> you walk into a castle, it's just a room full of ghosts masturbating. <laughs> well, we all know that... that- Cold spots are ghosts giving you blowjobs. <laughs> well, you're giving ghost blowjobs, I should say. Yeah. <laughs> it's just it's just a bunch of ghost penises rubbing up against you. It's not great. Oh, yeah. It's not great. That's why. Hey, listen, that's why... don't ask what ectoplasm really is. Oh, it's cum. <laughs> it's absolutely cum. Uh, like... why, why do you think Slimer was always grinning so much? <laughs> You know, ectoplasm is such a weird fucking thing because it came out of the spiritualist movement. And yeah. it was like, it might have actually been cum sometimes, probably. Because <laughs> it, was, it was used by spiritualists to, like, prove that a ghost existed, if my memory is correct. Yeah, it's well, been... my, my original, and I could be mistaking this for something else, is, like, the old-timey photographs of the uh, medium with, like, stuff coming out of her mouth. And so I think, like... Some of the yeah, older photos yeah. of ectoplasm where it was like large wads of cotton being pulled out of someone's mouth during the time the flash was going to go off. It could still be cum. It, it could still be cum, yes. Um, so Scott, a weird New Jersey reader, had a tale of Satanism. And I'm going to okay. read it in its entirety because I have a lot to say about this story. Okay. So it was a nice afternoon in 1977. We decided to get our packs, a tent, and a rifle to spend the night up in the woods. I never will understand spending the night in the woods in fucking northern Jersey, personally. I would never in a million years do it, but that's just me. Um, I took a journal along with me. When we came upon the castle, we were amazed, as always, at how it stood out in the woods. We entered it and were shocked to learn that someone had put up two boards with words spelled out in red paint. The nature of the writing intrigued me, so I copied down what the walls proclaimed, and my friend snapped a picture. Um, I want to point out that the picture that's with this article is clearly not... Red paint? So That's yeah, very clearly white paint. So it's clearly not the article... It's clearly not... It's also not bored. So for whatever reason, the article just has a random picture of it, um, which I don't like as a, as a rule, and I want to kind of point that out. Like To me, that's bad reporting, but regardless... Um, the journal stayed in a box until six months ago, six months ago, when after my wife's death, I was going through everything and read it. What was once, what once scribbled down in my youth was now revealed as one of the writings of Anton LaVey of the Church of Satan. I had a big LaVey phase. I know. I remember it. (laughs) Uh, I went to a local bookstore to match. We're going to talk about LaVey in a second too. Okay. Uh, I went to a local bookstore to match my journal with a Lex Satanicus. I concluded that the tales about Clinton Road were seriously understated. The Satanists who practiced there were not a joke, but a local grotto of people using the dark forces to bring forth their evil reign. Uh, now, when I go to Clinton Road, I look at everything in a different light. So, at this point, I think it's important to talk about LeVay and Satanism. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, for those of you who don't know, and Brandon, feel free to, to fill in any blanks. Okay. Uh, Anton LaVey, in his form of Satanism, didn't literally worship the devil. And I no. want to mention that a lot, because for whatever reason, people seem to think that LaVey and Satanism is eponymous, is like equivalent with worshiping the Christian devil. It's not. No. Um, <laughs> it's an atheistic religion. Satan, in this form of Satanism, is a transliteration of the Hebrew word for Satan, which is adversary, and represents an adversarial stance to traditional Christianity. On a whole, it's a literal fuck you to Christianity. <laughs> like, I don't know if there's any religion that exists more 
than Satanism it, as it, a fucking it, 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 It's a, uh, like, it's a troll on Christianity. Like, that's all, it's, there's, like, we disagree, and we know that if we do all of the things that will qualify you legally as a religion, we can then use that to, you know, do something... There, they get to do certain things they couldn't do if they weren't actually considered a religion um, to be like, hey, why are the Ten Commandments in front of, like, this government building? Like, so there's things that they're they're using that to leverage and troll and, and, and do what they kind of... And they do rituals and shit, but the rituals are more as, like, a, a fun... They're not... They don't think they're literally doing things. Yeah. It's just yeah. like a... Let's go... You know, we agree... On, on certain aspects of life, and it, it, it's sometimes fun to wear a cape and do stuff. Yeah, like, they, like so, they're doing because it it's fun. <laughs> yeah, so literally, I have while rich while there are, while there are rituals and magic, it's not in the metaphysical sense. It's more of an esoteric form of positive self affirmation. Yeah, because that's what it is. It's more like it's closer to the secret than it is like Harry Potter. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um. I'm not a huge fan of their anti-egalitarianism and social dog Darwinist dogma that Anton LaVey pulled from Ayn Rand. Mm-hmm. But on the whole, I kind of like uh, LaVey and Sat- Satanism because I think that they make a lot of good points. Um, the guy who's in charge of uh, the Church of Satan right now actually lives in Poughkeepsie, I think. Oh, does he? Yeah. Cool. Or at least near here because he brought his dogs to an animal yeah. hospital near here. Um, uh, I think uh, Carrie Poppy of... Oh no, Ross and Carrie fame um, is personal friends with him as well. Oh, cool. So, which makes total sense because yeah. uh, it, it Satanism, as I said, is like basically a religious form of atheism. Because hey, folks, atheism is not a religion; it's the absence of a religion. Yeah. Um, and Satanism is just like you said; it's a religious shell over atheism. Yeah. For all intents and purposes. Um, I also think that he calls out the Lex Satanicus. Um, I'm, I looked it up. The only thing I could pull up for it is the Portuguese version of it. So I don't believe he actually went to a bookstore and found that. Um, oh, probably not. I mean, that, that going to a bookstore and finding that, it seems like it, like somebody was trying to write something and they remembered a little bit the one time they saw Ash in the Evil Dead. <laughs> yeah. Um, also, the Satanic Bible... Uh, like you're probably not gonna find that in a, most bookstores, just because. Oh, true. Honestly, it's it's more because they don't want to deal with, uh, like religious groups being like, "Why do you have this?" Here? Um, you might find it in a New Paltz book, bookstore though. Oh, maybe. I think I think I've seen it there. Um. But really, this just smells of, like, this whole story smells of whoever wrote this on the boards, even if that even happened, was literally using LeVayan Satanism uh, as design. <laughs> yeah, like, they were doing the thing where they, they were, like... Uh, like it, it's, it's, it's messing with the normies. Yeah, uh, like, 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 everybody that gets it was like, ah, you, you've fallen for my trap card. Yeah. The, um... Oh, the other thing, too, uh... As an aside, 1977, uh, the grotto system was abolished prior to that by Anton LaVey, mm-hmm. so there wouldn't have been a grotto operating out of there in 1977. Oh, okay. Uh, I don't even think a grotto would ever operate out of something like that. It would make more sense to just run it out of someone's house or, like, rent a like a convention center to run a go- grotto. So, like, uh, I think people underestimate how normal... LeVay and Satanists are in their normal day-to-day life, so they think that they need to have these, like, esoteric rituals. But it's like, hey, Carl, want to talk about um, the funding this week? Yeah, sure, I guess. Yes. Like, it's pro- it's all just, like, like you said, like, funding or, like, community outreach or being, like, get together as a group and be like, what's something that we feel like a religious group is overstepping their bounds uh, that we kind of need to, like, step like in? Like temple, like the Statue of Bahamut. Yeah, exactly. Like the, Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I love that thing. That's that. I think is one of the funniest things ever. Yeah. Um, it, it, also, like the way that people freak out over that statue is really hilarious. Um, funny note. I think mm-hmm. that uh, a Church of Satan, because there's multiple, right? Yeah. Um, and every one of them claims to be the the, the original one. They're, they're, yeah. yeah. Um, I think one of them got mad that the 
Chilling Tales of Sabrina had a statue of Bahamut in in one of the episodes. And it's like, you really don't understand the point of this thing, do you? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, so Clinton Road is basically a horizontal slice of American urban legend. There are ghosts, misunderstanding of satire, and of course, an actual inability to learn American history. It's as American as poor, undemocratic application of democracy. <laughs> I was proud of that, so I wanted to read it. Uh, other haunts also populate the road outside of the questionably aged ghost. In one tale, a group was camping on a trail connected to the ruins of Cross Castle. One night around 1 a.m., two park rangers approached a group of campers. The campers were reprimanded by the park rangers as they had a fire and were drinking. Although, the park rangers said that their cars were fine where they were parked. The next day, after complying with the rangers' orders, the group came back to civilization and found that their cars had been ticketed. <laughs> when confronting the authorities, they were bewildered to find that the supposed park rangers were two men that had been killed on patrol in 1939. Ooh, um, ghost looked tickets. That up, looked that up, couldn't find anything about it. Uh, Did they have to pay the ghost tickets? No, they had to pay the real tickets because real cops ticketed them because they probably parked on the side of the road, which you shouldn't do Yeah, as a rule. Um, a ghostly blue 1988 Camaro is also said to prowl the road. The car um, was the, – the ghostly car is one of a teenage victim who was supposedly speeding on the road. Once again, no evidence of that person. Uh, there are also stories of ghostly ha handprints on the tailgates of visitors of the road. And once again, none of these stories are particularly unique to Clinton Road and are more a part of the, like, legend it's of from American ghost car sex. culture. Huh? Oh. Handprints <laughs> on the trunk of a car. <laughs> They're fucking on the outside? Yeah, it's like a, that's, it's a ghost. You can do what you want. That's true. I mean, if you're a ghost, you like, it's literally, you're dead. So, like, who cares? Yeah. Um, two more stories. Uh, being the urban legend grab bag it is, Clinton Road has a litany of tales of displaced animals. Floating dogs. I like it. Monkeys. Wait, floating wolves monkeys or just normal monkeys just that are out of monkeys. place? Okay. Just normal monkeys. Uh, wolves with red eyes. And yeah. even hellhounds have been spotted on the road, according to legend. You know what I just learned um, Friday? Hmm? Um, Erica, terrified of lemurs. Uh, I can understand that if you see a lemur in person. I can't. I guess she's never seen one before. The and then eyes, one was on the, the news. And she's like, what? Is, and it's getting messages and stuff. And I was like, you've never heard of Zabumafu? Because I know I've brought up Zabumafu in the past. He loves his garbanzo beans, which also just means chickpeas. Yeah. Um, well, I'll say I, I'll say I love Zabumafu, the type of lemur that Zabumafu is. But there are lemurs that have those, like, huge bug eyes. I know. I'm, I'm going to find out um, her opinion of the slow lowers later. Because they could go either way, to be oh, honest. That, that one. The fingers. I, it's Make sure she sees the fingers. <laughs> oh. <laughs> See, I love like lemurs. I love slow loris is adorable. But the fingers. But the fingers. I mean, even the, the little fingers, creepy though. ass fingers. Like, I feel like they could cast a spell or, or like rob me or something. I mean, they definitely can rob you. <laughs> <laughs> um, so some claim that the reason for all these animals is because of the nearby jungle habitat. Which is a Warner Brothers theme park that opened in 1972, lasted four years, and closed in 1976. Um, huh. it, it is responsible for the animals. Like, they, they're saying that it's why the animals are there. The park was abandoned in 1976, with some people claiming that the animals had been left to roam in the park with animal carcasses rotting in the confines of the park, which housed a drive through attraction. Huh. I looked into it. And if it sounds like bullshit to you, it absolutely is because there is literally no way that Warner Brothers would just let animals, which are worth a lot of money, because one of them was an elephant, uh, just sit and rot in a park in lieu of selling the animals and any of the assets to make back as much money as humanly possible. I love the idea of driving across the road and just seeing an elephant, though. That's horrifying in upstate New York or upstate Jersey. Yeah, like but I'd if, be scared. I, I, it's it, it, it'd be a little bit scary, but I feel like you'd be stopped. The elephant would be like taking it sweet, like just going slow, 
we were like, mm-hmm. come on. But then at the same time, you're also just like, of course it's a fucking elephant. Like, like something would seem like annoying, but also like, why am I surprised? Like, I mean, uh, the way my life is going these days, I wouldn't be surprised if the next time I go out, there's an elephant just in my path. Yeah. So, you know, whatever. Um, so I think all of this is unlikely anyways, and you can slot literally any previous explanation I have for alien animals from the past here to suit your needs, because I'm not going to go over that again. Because <laughs> <laughs> I've explained it a lot on this podcast. Um, frankly, the biggest problem, though, is there's a lack of game and cold winters. Yeah. Um, and if it was any kind of, like, savanna, sub-Sahara animal, it would need some kind of warmth. Um, and... It's likely that if a large predator were released from the woods, they would predate the nearby farms, of which there are many. I don't know if any of our listeners have ever driven through upsta- uh, uh, northwestern Jersey, but it's all cow farms. Yeah. Um, so the farmers would make a lot of a stink over that, as opposed to some teenagers. Yeah. Like, it would be a big deal. Um, so... Kind of rounding this out, there are some other stories from the road, but it's mostly much the same. Poorly described UFO here, ghost truck there, etc., etc. On May 1983, however, a body was found in the woods close to the road. Unlike the other deaths in this episode, I could actually find an Associated Press article about this body. This body was Daniel Drepper, Deppner. Daniel Deppner. I read that so wrong. Age 46. <laughs> a local criminal involved in mafia activity in the nearby Rockland County. Now, the autopsy revealed that they had been killed and that they had ice crystals in their heart. Brandon, yes. does this sound familiar to you at all? Not the ice crystals in the heart thing, but the... Uh, the bold text on top. I was like, oh, okay. The Iceman. <laughs> Fair enough. Yeah. So, if you're familiar with um, if you're Everybody familiar, knows about the Iceman. Like, there's yeah. this, like, if you go to New York City and, like, just, there will be people who are like, yep, they found one of his bodies over there, and then there was another body over, it, like, like yeah. under some bridges. <laughs> yeah. So, this is, this is the, this, this body was um the one that actually outed the Iceman, uh, Richard Kluklinski, a fellow Polish man who had a penchant for walking. <laughs> in a job as a contract killer. Um, I'm not going to go into Richard Klinsky. There's like a full series on that, and it's also not what our podcast is about at all. Yeah, we're um, not true crime. It's a it's a cool story. Um, I say cool story. It's a horrifying story. Um, because a man murdered a bunch of men and mm-hmm. some women, I think. Um. So let's 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 not glorify Richard Kulinski. He was a monster. Uh, he was just good at killing, I guess. Um, but in the end, Clinton Road does in fact have a legitimate claim to fame, and it's more far more morbid than any of the rumors spread by the teenagers who roam it. Um, there's also other stories about like the Jackson Whites, which is an incredibly racist thing. Uh, what is I'm that? Not gonna- Yeah, so basically it's uh, a bunch of Native American women and uh, Hessian soldiers had kids, and supposedly they roamed the woods. Huh. Yeah, it's kind of racist. I mean, that's... I mean... Honestly... That's all of American history. (laughs) Yeah, yeah. Also, northern Jersey... Northwestern Jersey's kind of racist in general, too, if you've ever been there. Um, (laughs) So... You know, um, but yeah, so that's really all I got on the, the, on Clinton road. I wanted to do it for a while. Uh, I just haven't. And, uh, now we've done it. So oh. let's never speak of it again. <laughs> wait, 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 I want to see what year this fucking article was written. Probably sooner than you would the hope. One, uh, More recently than you would hope. Yeah. The end of the film places. Well, I mean, it's not an old looking article. Uh, there, wait, is it? It's on weirdnewjersey dot com. I'm looking yeah. for like an about the Arthur whenever because I just googled the um Jackson Whites, but um it's not in italic, so it's not like they stole it from an old, an old article. But it says 
They were a mongrel hybrid of renegades, and it describes them as like having the Dutchman's eyes. <laughs> like, they, what? That's I was like, what year was this written? Uh, probably more recently than you would want, because I think so. Um, I will say this: we're New Jersey. Um, the guys who run it, I'm pretty sure are um, not the kinds of people I want to affiliate with. Uh, because Brandon, you want to know when the first issue of Weird New Jersey was? No. Yes. No. 1922. 1992. Oh, good. Yeah. So they're not great. They're not great uh, in terms of like being woke. They're not very woke. No, they're not. So from what I can tell is that the website they just re uh, re registered it in. Uh, November, September 26th, 2012. Yeah. That sounds about right. It's it's really, honestly, Weird New Jersey is just an aggregator. A bunch of people write things in to them, yeah. and they aggregate it. It's like a traditional newsletter. Mm. So, but, yeah. Uh, so that's something I found out in Weird New Jersey, and, um... Man, I really don't know how to end podcast episodes. Anyway, uh, as always, our <laughs> website is CryptopediaCast.com. Our Instagram is at CryptopediaCast. Our Twitter is at CryptopediaCast. Um, our email is CryptopediaCast at gmail.com or us at CryptopediaCast.com. All these links are on the website. Uh, we have a Patreon. Uh, and last I checked, we have four jackalopes. So, Brandon, you want to read that list off? Yes, I do. We've got Clay Sinclair. Marty Von Party, Bird Schneider, and Jonathan Shepard. We sure um, do. We do. I'm I'm trying. Uh, I'm so bad at te- technology. Why you hate me? Um, are you trying to verify that that's everyone or? No, I was trying to see how many people are in our Discord right now. Uh, there's a decent number. Um, be sure to check it out. There's a link in the episode description to the Discord. I believe I try mm-hmm. to put it there. If I haven't, um yell at me on twitter uh, i mean actually don't yell at me on twitter uh, I'm, what i'm just oh. yelling okay i'm 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 a boy with a brittle heart so don't don't make me feel sad uh <laughs> we have a facebook group which i've been getting a lot of requests to join the facebook group actually. they haven't to be honest like i could be um looking at those requests but the but the, the, the first time we got one i was like you know what i'm gonna I see this now, but I'm going to let John... I still open it, like, vet people, but I'm like, I'll let John... Hand. I've just been, and it's, it, it's never backfired. <laughs> well, we had one person whose account got hacked, and they posted something to it, and I moderated it away, but that uh, was a okay. whole other thing. They they posted, like, a a shoe sale thing, so I, I just removed it. I didn't remove them from it, because I'm pretty sure... Because I do actually check people's Facebook accounts to make sure that they're real. Yeah. Because um, I don't really want a bunch of shoe salesmen... Um, but anywho, uh, if you enjoy the podcast, be sure to rate, review, subscribe, all that stuff. If you have monster requests or stories, send them in. Um, we have a really good track record of finishing those. We do. I think we've I hit mean, all of fairness, them so far. Yeah. It, yeah. Yeah. We've hit all of them. So. Mm-hmm. Um, you could find me on Instagram at donkey underscore hands. My website is boyerb.com. My email is brandon at cryptopcast.com and my Twitter is at crypto brandon capital C capital B. My Instagram is at mu2057. My Twitter is at JF Dunham. My website is johndunhamgames.com and my email is john at cryptopediacast.com. It's getting a little bit less dour in my social media. There's it, 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 it's it's your slightly it's slowly I saw it's some, slowly some becoming mini less painting. depressive. Um, I haven't painted any minis yet. I assembled them. Oh, I, I just okay. I just saw that. I assumed that you had uh, done some kind of painting. I saw some 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 sweet as board games. Mine uh, is still just housework and cats. <laughs> That's usually how it goes. Yeah. Um, our art was done by Tom Hill. You could find him. Uh, on Instagram at Thomas Michael Hill. His website is greatergloryco.com and his email is tommikehill at gmail.com. As always, I'm John. I'm Brandon. And things are going to get weirdly spoopy this month. Boop.
be. Although I don't think we have any more episodes this month, so. This month? Yeah, we've got one more. No, we don't. What? What day we is don't. it? We don't. Because next, next Monday is the 19th, Brandon. Let's see. Today's the 17th, and then we skip the 31st. Yeah, we, yeah, we got one on the third. Oh, yeah, you're right. Yep. It's Our Mondays. next episode is November 2nd, uh, so we're at a spoopy month. We're at a spoopy month. I'm still going to be doing some spoopy stuff. I'm, we're we're going to be on a lag. I mean, we're we're literally two days after the spoopiest spoop. Yeah. Because so. I think right. I want to do two spoopy episodes, and then I got to try to find a uh, cold times. I've got I've got um. There's one episode that I want to do. You know, I've already done the 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 sign off, so this is all past the sign off. Yeah. <laughs> Apparently. <laughs> I got one I want to do, but I got to read a book for it. So I was going to do it this week for Spoopy. So maybe I'll read the book and it will come out next year if we're still doing it next year. We'll see. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) 